नमस्कार एंड वेलकम टू माय लेक्चर ऑन मेथड्स ऑफ लर्निंग Now, on the basis of extensive research and study, the psychologists have given us various methods of learning. But among those uh, methods of learning, the three major methods are: the first one, the trial and error method of learning; second one, method of insightful learning; and the third one, that is of method of learning by conditioning. Now, let us see regarding the trial and error method of learning. This method is based on the theory of connectionism propounded by Edward Lee Thorndike. According to him, learning is a result of connection or the bond established between the stimulus and response or reaction. So, in short, it is called the SR bond theory. The environment provides the stimulus to which the individual makes their response through the senses. The bond or connection between stimulus response can be strengthened through repetition. When one try to learn something new, it is not possible to grasp it all at once. One have to make several attempts to succeed. Now, with practice, one can grasp the new thing easily. So, repetition makes it easier. In the initial trials, number of errors are high, but as trials are repeated, the number of errors gradually decreases. So, in the same way, the amount of time taken also gradually reduces, and finally, error diminishes. And as a result, learning takes place. So, according to trial and error method of learning, at first, when we try something, there might be certain uh, uh, errors that takes place or the mistakes that takes place. But as we keep on trying, there will be no error, and success will be achieved. Experiment on trial and learning. Thunder carried out an experiment on trial and error learning with a cat. He puts a hungry cat in a puzzle box. A plate of fried rice was kept outside at a little distance in front of the puzzle box. The door of the puzzle box could be opened only by pulling a string from inside. So no one can help the cat from outside. So in order to achieve the food, the hungry cat adopted the blind attempt of pushing the head between the bars, thrusting the palm and some other types of random movements. In course of the attempt, the string was pulled accidentally. You have to remember the word accidentally and the door was opened. The cat came out and got the food, the fried fish which was kept outside the puzzle box. Again, the cat was placed in the same situation and after some random attempt managed to come out and got the food. This time the attempt of the cat was lesser in number and the cat had to face lesser failure in getting the food. In the successive trials, the kid was placed in the same situation that the kid was able to come out of the puzzle box without wasting any time and making any error. So, this is described as learning by trial and error. Now, let us see what are the characteristics of trial and error learning then. Trial and error learning, it is a gradual, gradual process, a very slow process. The soul of this method is repetition as we have to attempt again and again. At the initial stage, the number of errors and time taken appear to be high. But in subsequent attempt, time taken and errors both decreases. And now in this method, wrong attempt is given away to the right attempt. It is described as blind mechanical method of learning. And human and animal both learn through this method. There is no need of high intellectual or mental ability in the trial and error method of learning. Anyone can proceed through this trial and error learning. It is a common and simple method of learning. Now, what is the educative value of trial and error method of learning? Trial and error method of learning enables the people to gain efficiently if different subjects by making repeated attempts in their own ways. The people has to make a number of unsuccessful attempts before they arrive at a desired result. So, people should not be demoralized or demotivated in aspect of learning. Students' motto should be try, try and try again. After long series of repetition, it is possible for a student or an individual to accept, achieve success in any job or matter. This method lays more stress on learning by doing. Such learning is practical learning. Both teacher and student may gain more experience through practical knowledge. Through this method, various educational problems and common day-to-day -day problems of life can also be solved. Bad habits can be given up and good habits can be formed through this method of learning. It is more useful for the children of low intelligence than the bright. So, these are the, some of the educative value of trial and error method of learning. 
so this method is better for the children of tender age than adult as there is no need of more intellectual ability in trial and error learning now let us see the other method that is insightful method of learning Insightful method of learning is based on Gestalt theory. The three German psychologists, that is Wertheimer, Koller, and Kafka, they were the propounder of this theory. Gestalt is a German word which means whole or total pattern. According to Gestalt psychologists, learning is an individual activity that involves the power of observation, perception, and insight of the learner. So, according to the German psychologists, they oppose the trial and error method of learning as they lay more stress upon the physical activities so it is a blind mechanical process according to gestalt psychologist learning takes place as a whole in the act of learning the learner tries to grasp the whole situation but not as a parts so when the interrelationship of the parts came to be known the idea of the whole emerges in the mind of the learner suddenly just like a flash of the light very suddenly so as a result the learner may solve any problem through it so according to gestalt psychologist Learning is possible by insightful method and not by the method of trial and error. Now let us see the experiment on insight. Collar had conducted several experiments to prove insightful learning. In an experiment, he kept the most intelligent chimpanzee named Sultan confined to a case. Some bananas were placed outside the case and two small sticks were also kept in the case. When the chimpanzee saw the bananas, then he wanted to eat the bananas, which is a natural one. At the first stage, he had tried to get the bananas by extending his bare hands outside, but he had followed the method of trial and error in this regard, but he didn't succeed at this method. After some time, he looked around and saw two small sticks inside the case as well. So with the help of the two sticks in two hands, he tried to get the bananas, but it was not accessible with the single stick in hand. He had spent some time without any attempt. After some time, suddenly, an idea came to his mind that the two sticks which could be fitted by joining one end with the other. So he did it and combined the stick in hand was extended outside. Then the banana will reach. The Sultan was able to solve the problem by insightful learning. So Sultan was kept in the same condition for the next day. This time also he could able to solve the same problem easily by joining the two sticks together and reaching the bananas. Now, what are the characteristics that we, we have found in the insightful learning? Learning occurs sudden, just like a flash of light. It emphasizes more on the whole than the parts. When the interrelationship of the parts is known, the idea of the whole immerses in mind. It avoids blind mechanical process of trial and error learning. It emphasizes on power of observation and perception. Insight is related to the intellectual level. And this method is not generally helpful for the common people as we need li little bit of observation and uh, perception in this method. Now let us see the educational significance of learning by insight. The learner should grasp the whole or complete object first before comprehending its parts. On the other hand, the teacher should present the whole or complete object first to the students and then proceed to explain its parts. It is based on a maxim of teaching that is proceed from whole to the parts. It is very helpful for creative and constructive activities. In the highest stage of learning, it encourages one to undertake research and experimentation independently. It makes man self-dependent and become guide to his own action. The dormant qualities of the student may be developed through this method. It is very helpful for gifted children because there is need of higher intelligence in insightful learning. And in order to understand a difficult subject, this method has proved to be very useful. Method of learning by conditioning. The last method. Ivan Pavlov was a propounder of conditioning, classical theory of learning. He was a Russian. Generally, natural stimulus results in natural response. For instance, saliva begins to flow from the mouth of the dog when it sees food. It is innate as well as natural. There is nothing to learn. But according to Pavlov, natural stimulus may sometimes be substituted by an artificial stimulus or conditioned stimulus at as it is called and a new connection of artificial stimulus and natural response may be created. In simple words, learning occurs when a natural response is associated with other artificial stimulus instead of a natural stimulus. Now let us see the experiment of Pavlov on learning by conditioning. 
Pavlov carried out an experiment on a hungry dog. In the first step, he provided meat, a food to the dog. When the meat was presented before the dog, then saliva began to flow from the mouth of the dog, which is very, very natural. In the second attempt, a bell was rung. To this, the dog had reacted with a natural response of hearing the sound by raising the ears. In the third step, he presented the meat and at the same time rang the bell. At this, the response was found to be salivation. He repeated this egg for a few days under similar condition and the result was the same. In the last step, only the bell was rung but no meat was provided. Although the meat was not presented before the dog yet, saliva began to flow from the mouth of the dog. In this way, Pavlov discovered that the dog salivated in response to the bell, which is the artificial, artificial stimulus. The bell is the artificial stimulus, but the response is salivation, which is natural. In other words, the dog had learned to salivate at the sound of the bell. So this salivation to the sound of the bell is that of the conditioning. Thus, learning is the result of condition reflex. The experimental proceeding that led to conditioning in learning, it may be symbolically presented as follows. Stimulus 1, that is meat, response 1, salivation. Stimulus 2, sound of the bell, response to, uh, respond to the sound. Stimulus 1 and stimulus 2, bell plus foot, it, the response is salivation. And several trials continued under uh, sound of the bell. The stimulus 2, response is what? Salivation. So this is regarding the uh, condition theory of learning. So let us see the characteristics of condition learning that. Learning is the result of condition or bond between natural response and an artificial stimulus. It is a mechanical process. Repetition is, is necessary for this learning as well. There is no need of higher intelligence and conditioned learning. Education implication of learning by conditioning. Reward and punishment are closely associated with conditioning. Reward strengthens the bond and punishment weakens it. So reward encourages the student to do something better. On the contrary, punishment discourages the activity or performances. It stresses the importance of repetition in learning which is very useful for reading, writing, spelling, etc. With this method, it is also possible for children to develop good habits like neatness, cleanliness, punctuality, regularity, discipline, etc. So with the help of this method, bad habits may be broken and it emphasizes the importance of the right type of training during the early period of life. So language can be developed through the method of condition. It stresses the importance of the idea of association of learning, which is very much helpful in learning and memorization. Thank you.